Okay, so today is going to be a bit of a different retrospective video, specifically covering GOAT format again, but I want to specifically talk about the Exerion format edition, which came a little bit later than the June 2005 edition, uh, because on June 1st, 2005 was when Lost Millennium was released, and the majority of GOAT format is played before June 2005. And there is a couple different variations that I want to go over in today's retrospective with an asterisk because it's not a full retrospective, but it's also still going to be a retrospective, sort of. So if you guys enjoy this type of retrospective, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And thank you so much for us hitting over 800 subscribers. So consider this a thank you video. And let's go ahead and dive right into it. If you're a fan of GOAT format, you know about the pre-June 2005 format. This is the format that majority of people play. If you watch my GOAT format retrospective video, that is the format that we are talking about. What I also want to mention, however, is the post-CRV format, otherwise known as Cybernetic Revolution. Now, the post-CRV format includes all the cards from Cybernetic Revolution on back. However, this was historically only seen at SJC Boston in 2005, which took place in early September. Now, the consensus among most GOAT format players is that post-CRV format is just a very different format than pre-Exerion or even the actual Exerion format. And that's because of the fact that the inclusion of Cyber Dragon and its fusions take away a lot of what makes GOAT format fun for a lot of players. It sees more sporadic play, and on top of that, there's no major GOAT format tournaments that are hosted today that includes Cybernetic Revolution and its card pool, as of the making of this video. It is, however, widely regarded as being more fun than originally thought, much like the pre-June 2005 format. It's sorely lacking in exploration as most players stick to either pre-Exerion or the actual Exerion format. I also want to mention that the only major tournament played under these conditions was SJC Boston. So with that little mini intro slash not mini intro out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of Exerion format. So now we can begin with the actual intro kind of to this video. With the success of my GOAT format retrospective video and the growth it continues to see, I thought it would be fun to talk about a different version of GOAT format. There's been a lot of discussion and debate regarding Exerion Universe in GOAT format. Considering the time period it was released and the state of the game at the time, it's not surprising. This video is going to analyze Exerion Universe's inclusion in GOAT format, how its inclusion warped it, why it is no longer used in modern GOAT format, and some of the key differences between pre-Exerion and post-Exerion GOAT formats. Let's start with putting Exerion in his historical perspective and give some background information on the card and the format in general. My name is Avery, and this is a GOAT format retrospective Exerion Universe Edition. So in case you don't know what Exerion Universe does, it's a level 4 Dark Beast Warrior Effect Monster with 1800 attack and 1900 defense. Those stat lines will come in handy later on. And it says, during your battle step, if this card attacks a defense position monster, you can activate this effect. This card loses exactly 400 attack, and if it does, it will inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. These effects last until the end phase. Yes, I'm using the Battle Pack 2 translation because I tried reading the DR04, and it's just really not aged all that well. So with that being said, let's dive into the historic perspective. Go format, as you likely know, follows the April 2005 Forbidden and Limited list. Most people play the format the way it was played between June and August 1st of 2005. There are some notable things that happened during the time the April 2005 list was out, which includes... 1. The Battle Position Rule Changes, which was effective June 2005. 2. The Lost Millennium released June 1, 2005. 3. Cybernetic Revolution released August 17, 2005. And 4. The release of the promotional tins, of which Exerion Universe was in, and that was on September 1, 2005. Judging by this, one would argue that including Exerion Universe, but not Cybernetic Revolution, is simply historically inaccurate. Cybernetic Revolution was not legal for tournament play until September 1st. At the same time, some shops were able to get their hands on Exerion tins early, which led to a pseudo-custom format where Exerion was legal for play, but Cybernetic Revolution and the infamous Cyber Dragon were not. 
Despite no high-level tournaments being played under these conditions, when the revival period began in around 2012-ish, the GOAT format community decided to play with Exerion Universe, but without Cybernetic Revolution. During the GOAT format revival period, Exerion was legal and Cybernetic Revolution cards were not. Part of why it was included was because many people used Chris Perovic's 2005 SJC Boston decklist as a starting point, a deck that included Exerion Universe, but not Cyber Dragon, though Cyber Dragon was legal for this event. As the revival period gained traction, many people simply kept Exerion Universe due to how good it was, but most agreed that including Cyber Dragon took away what people were looking for from GOAT format matches. The revival period was very much dominated by the Perovic build. Innovations in the format also led to the rise of decks such as Zoo and Chaos Control, which became strong challengers to the Perovic build. For four years, the community explored GOAT format with Exerion included. Many innovations in deck building, card ratios, tactics, and strategy led to a very skillful format that saw a steep rise in the learning curve of GOAT format. It can also be argued that Exerion increased the skill gap between good and great players, though others argue that less skilled players could compete thanks to Exerion just being so damn powerful. Now that the revival period is over and we've entered the quote-unquote modern period of GOAT format where we don't even really see GOAT control being played, it's mostly Chaos and Warrior decks, this is characterized by the removal of Exerion Universe from the accepted card pool. Most of the community is on board with removing Exerion Universe from the card pool. It's more historically accurate and more reflective of the GOAT format that people not only remember, but actually want to play. Now the Perovic build is of course an Exerion GOAT format deck that was built by Chris Perovic. Chris popular the build, showcased it in several major revival era tournaments, and cemented it as the best deck of the format. The community consensus about this build was that it soft solved Exerion Goat format. It was the best deck of this particular format. And because of this, a lot of people fell on one of two sides of things. Either solving GOAT format was great as it led to more skillful matches, or it was not great because it shrunk the card pool and limited creative deck building. Whichever side of the argument you fall on, you're right. Universe is a very polarizing and very powerful card that makes almost any deck better for including it. But by not being historically accurate, the community has moved on and the Perovic build is now relegated to the annals of GOAT format history. Including Exerion in the GOAT format card pool streamlines deck building, reduces the size of the competitive card pool, and alters how players approach tactics and strategy in game. His 1800 attack makes him a prominent aggressive option, while his 1900 defense ass puts him in a class above monsters like Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer and even Gemini Elf. His effect is stellar and he's a dark monster which synergizes well with chaos. Here's just a small list of things Exerion does in GOAT control. Punishes Scapegoat and other defensive cards by dealing piercing damage. He stands up to Tsukiyomi, unlike high attack low defense options such as Kaiku. Walls Air Knight Parshath with his 1900 defense booty, effectively weakening opposing Air Knights. Fuels BLS and Chaos Sorcerer plays with his dark attribute. Is a level 4 monster, which means little in the way of committing to his summon, such as with Air Knight Parshath. Replaces many suboptimal monsters such as DD Assailant and Enraged Battle Ox. Now, with all that being said, here's a small list of monsters that Exerion just completely nullifies. DD Assailant, Azura Priest, Gravekeeper Spy, DD Warrior Lady, Enraged Battle Ox, and Roulette Barrel. All of those cards saw play at some point in 05 in a GOAT Control main deck. With Exerion removing all those options from the card pool, it's much easier to come to a consensus quote-unquote best build, which made it much easier to learn the deck. Its matchups and simply how powerful it was, this has all changed with Exerion's removal from the format, as those cards are now options once again. With Exerion Universe no longer in the card pool, modern GOAT format has seemingly been blown wide open. It is far from solved, in fact there is no longer any consensus on whether GOAT control is even the deck to beat anymore, and at the time of this recording I can promise you that Chaos and Warrior and some Zombies and some Monarchs are the decks to beat. Exerion's power allowed players to fill a lot of roles with just two cards. Now that he's gone, these roles get harder to fill. How do we replace such a powerful weapon? I think that that answer comes down to one simple thing and that's playstyle. Exerion was a card that transcended playstyle. Why focus on aggressive or passive options when the deck was pretty much as good as it was going to get? For some, this was the end goal. Two players playing the same deck would put the emphasis on in-game skill as opposed to deck construction. Playstyle took a back seat for this reason. Then again, this is a big reason why many people prefer GOAT format without Exerion. In-game skill isn't the only measure of skill when it comes to a competitive trading card game after all. Removing Exerion puts more emphasis on playstyle and deck construction while also being more historically accurate. 
Exerion's removal from the card pool has a drastic impact on the metagame. Most importantly, the format gets more diverse. Deck lists naturally change due to the expanded competitive card pool. Variance between similar builds increases, which puts an emphasis not just on in-game play, but also card choice, playstyle, and in-game tactics. In terms of specific decks, Goat Control gets weaker in some aspects, as do decks like Zoo and Chaos. It also forces players to be aware of the many ways decks can change without him, notably Goat Control. However, some decks actually gain power, especially decks that rely on defense, more so than offense. For instance, any deck that relies on recruiters gets a bit better because there are fewer ways to deal damage through them. Recruiters are always a threat because they replace themselves if they die by battle. Xerion didn't really care about that. It often took more investment to get rid of opposing Xerions than what you gain through recruiters. Remove him, and recruiters once again have the ability to generate advantage safely. Either that or force an opponent to waste removal to prevent them from blessing. Ultimately, you can play GOAT format however you want to, including Xerion, don't, play before the battle position changes if your opponent agrees, so be it. But if you're playing competitive GOAT format games, whether IRL or online, it's important to understand the differences between pre and post Xerion and adjust accordingly. If you're making the switch, don't be afraid to try different replacements for Xerion. Don't be afraid to play around with card ratios or to take some so-called staples out for other cards. It's a whole new ball game right now, and while some niche metas have adjusted, Others are still figuring out the right balance. And that is the story of Xerion Universe in Goat Control format. I hope you guys enjoyed this bit of a different take on the retrospective side of things. I know a lot of people like Goat Control, and I figured, you know what, let's revisit it, but let's specifically talk about Xerion Universe, and really even why in tournaments today you don't see any places including Xerion in the card pool. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.